Well, just a little bit. Her tattoo, her tattoo, because I want to know. Hmm? He said, oh, he's going to ask me about the tattoo. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. I was just going to say, what questions did I ask? <laughs> All right. So, what's in this podcast? Episode 85. You see, we're rolling through the episodes here at JMU. I have another special guest from the Poetry Cafe. Please introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Jame. And again, I am Poetry Cafe. <laughs> nice, nice. So what is, what is the work that you do in the Poetry Cafe? I am a vocalist, so I sing a lot of the pieces with Josephus in between the sets. Um, there are some that are like original songs that I've done, and then there are also pieces that we do together that are mixed in with his poetry, and then songs that I've written as well. All right. So, so how long have you been doing music? The same. I have uh, been in music since I was born. Literally, I grew up in a very music-based family. Everyone in my family sang. Everyone was in the choir. All of that. So I learned music and have been writing music, producing music since I was very, very young. Yeah. I met Josephus my senior year of high school. I was 16 years old, and I actually met him through his poetry organization, which is called The Poetry Project. So I started off doing slam poetry and writing with him. And then when I turned 19, um, that's whenever he was like, oh, you really, really sing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, I started off just filling in because he had another vocalist at the time. But then that vocalist ended up stepping down and I began singing with him full time. Nice, nice. So, nice. yeah, here we are. Yeah, I you know, definitely how tell, many years later? I, 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 could tell, I could definitely tell you were born into it because you're still mm -hmm. confident on the stage. That's something that I'm trying to develop as an artist too, just to be confident and, and not feel, you know, nervousness. And stuff. I, can, I can, can't even mm -hmm. tell if you're nervous or not. You know what I'm saying? That's, I'm literally always nervous. You. You do a good job I'm always of nervous. It's just like instead of me going inside of myself and being like, oh my God, don't look at me. I'm like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> so you saying. push it out instead of like bringing it in. But yes. it's, 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 it's like nervous excitement. Right. Um, I'm right. nervous because every audience is different. Yeah. People are different. You never know who's going to be there. But I'm also excited because I really am a people person. Yeah. Like, deep down inside okay, like we okay. had an artist tonight that was like hi y'all uh, i just want you to know i love you i'm like oh my god me too the same way i love you so great yeah. to meet you <laughs> yeah, so have you ever like how do you deal with like getting on stage like when was your first time like getting on stage <sighs> um the very very first time i can remember being on a stage um I cannot remember how old I was, but I know it was in church. And my grandfather was a bishop, and he used to be like, does anybody have a song that they want to sing? Me, my little self, I walked up there and I sang a song. Um, the next earliest, earlier occasion that I can remember um, is in the fifth grade. I got the uh, the solo in our, yeah, yeah, <laughs> our chorus yeah, class. Yep. Um, so that's like the first like big stage in front of people. And, and I always remember it because I was so nervous and my voice cracked and stuff. And so, like, after the show, I'm like, yeah, I got asthma. <laughs> so that's when my voice cracked. Yeah. But my mom heard me. She was just like, N I mean, yeah, you have asthma, but that's not why. Your voice just cracked. You, you, you messed up. Yeah. And that just really stuck with me because now I'm so much better at owning my mistakes. Right. I don't try right. to make excuses and say, oh, well, it's because of this or it's because of that or whatever. Right. I'm just like, hey. It happens. Um, I'm up here. I'm gonna yeah. keep pushing through. So, um, yeah, those are those are like my earliest memories gotcha. of music. Gotcha. So even with all your experience, do you still mess up on stage? Or one hundred percent all gotcha. the time. Gotcha. I forget words. Okay. I sing the wrong note. Okay. I start laughing. I choke up. I, like all of it is a part of the experience that yeah. I've learned. I mean, if you want to see perfection. Go see Beyonce. Right. <laughs> but, I'm pretty sure she messes up and just cut, knows right. how to cover and, it up. Right, and, and I feel like that's where the professionalism comes in because mm -hmm. the only people that know you messed up, it's you and God, yeah. of course. But yeah. you know, no one knows that you mess up as long as you continue to push forward. And one thing that I do whenever I mess up, I laugh, or, or sometimes I'll just be yeah. like, "Ha, you heard that." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I just make it very involved. I get my audience involved, so it's like, you, we're in this song together. We're yeah. on this journey together. So yeah. all the hiccups, all the bumps, all the mess ups, it's making for just a great experience yeah. for all of us. It's making for a great show. Yeah, I noticed that you get the crowd involved and you and you make it to where like we're all like we're all one family here mm -hmm. in, this, in this one arena. So yes. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So where are you originally from? 
Um, I was actually born in Charlotte, but I reside in Greensboro, North Carolina. I've lived there since 2012. So, I mean, I'm basically at that 10 year mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I basically live there. How do you like it out there? Um, I enjoy it. I, I'm really big in the arts community. So a lot of what I do is activism, is arts expression. Um, I host an open mic. I do this. Um, I work within the school systems, again, doing art and uh, facilitating workshops, things like that. So, um, you know, I work for the bank on thought. But <laughs> other than that, um, I, I definitely just try to help create spaces for young artists and for that for that self-expression because growing up myself I didn't feel like I had a lot of avenues I was this kid with all these emotions all this passion all this energy and I wasn't good at sports I was great at music but it's like you know you have chorus you have orchestra but there's just not a free space where you can bring your own music and you can bring your own stuff so that's what I try to create that's, good. That's really good so how do you balance doing all those things and still you know having time for yourself and I stop making excuses. Mm -hmm. um, yep. We all get the same 24 hours yep. in a day. And when you wake up early enough, I'm not a morning person, but when you wake up early enough, you realize that you really do have enough time to do the things that you want to do yep. and to do the things that you're passionate about. So I'm really big on there is no gray area. It really is yes or no. Yep. Because when there are things that you want to do, you do them. You yeah. don't you don't care what's in the way. You don't care if you have booked that day. If there's something that you want to do, you do it. And then if there's something that you really, really don't want to do, that's whenever the excuses come in. Like, oh, let me check my calendar. Oh, let me right. let me see. Oh, I'll, I'll get back to you. You know you really don't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. So I do my best to just be concrete and find it with myself. Like, yes, this is what I want to do. No, this is not what I want to do. And then I'm better able to um, manage my time, right. um, you know, in the different avenues and doing the different things that I do. Right. So mm -hmm. do you find yourself, um, do you do music like full time for money or is it some another job that you have or other things like that? Um, I do have, like this, I have opportunities yeah. where I do get paid yeah. um, to sing, I get paid to produce music. I'm actually going to be starting an internship where I'll be actually getting paid to record people and write with them and do critiques like nice. that. Um, but honestly, I just enjoy singing. Yep. I enjoy creating. Yep. Um, there are several many artists in person that'll come up to me and say, hey, this is my vision. This is what I want to do. I really want you to be a part of it. I'm just like, I don't care about the money. Yep. I don't care. Yep. I just, I want to be a part of it too. Yep. I love right. that you're excited right. about it. So um, it really just, it really just depends on the person or the organization that I'm working with, whether or not I'm like, okay, yeah, pay me for my time right. or no, nah, let me. I just want. I want to give this to you because right. I feel it. So it's the passion that most right. drives you more. Mm -hmm. I, I try to tell people, you know, on this podcast we mostly do information, a lot of information for young artists and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. coming up. When you really enjoy doing something, it's more of the passion. It's not about the mm -hmm. money. The money sometimes you'll get discouraged because sometimes right. the money doesn't come. So if you mm -hmm. act on full on with your passion, the mm -hmm. money will eventually come. It does. It always mm -hmm. does because you, again, you're doing something that you're unconsciously perfecting. You're doing something that you, you want to do in your sleep, that you can do in your sleep. And regardless of how good or how bad you think you are, there's always someone that you're better than, and then there's always someone that's better than you, and that's how you keep that right. continuity of, of being able to do the craft and pass, passing the craft on. So, you know, you may not feel like you're all that, but somebody's looking at you, and they're wanting your beginning steps. They're wanting your foundation. The same way you're looking at someone else, like, hey, how did they get to that step? So it's all about right. each one teach one, truly. Mm -hmm. So That's definitely nice. That's mm -hmm. definitely nice. So do you have like any music that you record that's out on like a, all platforms or anything? Yes. Um, <laughs> um, you can actually search my name. It's Jame, J-H-A apostrophe M-A-I. Um, I'm on Apple. I'm on Spotify, Amazon, nice. literally all the streaming networks. Nice. I have uh, three, four, five complete projects. And then nice. I have about 15 singles now nice. and two music videos oh, yeah. so <laughs> I have quite a, yeah, yeah, I have quite, a, quite a bit that I'm working on and then um, I actually just got with a new engineer um, we're working on a project right now so I have like a lot of a lot of music that we've worked oh, on yeah. in the last yeah. month so I'm super excited oh, yeah. that's and, that, and that's I mean like I said I'm doing something that I love that I'm passionate yep. about so it's not necessarily about how much money I make or how much notoriety I get it's just like 
ooh, this is a new song. Ooh, this yeah, is a new beat. Like ooh, this is a new opportunity. That's the same way. Yeah, the journey. Yep. Enjoy the journey. Yeah, like the I studio. Was... The studio for me is like a. It's a release. So mm-hmm. when I when I feel like I'm overwhelmed with something, I can just go and release all my thoughts. You know what I mean? I definitely, I definitely enjoy. I definitely understand yes. that. Um. So what are some of the things that you would tell a young artist to like learn about? You know, to watch out for as coming up. Um. Things to watch out for. People's words and people's actions. Yep. For real. Like, because I know for me, it was, oh, let me be your manager. <laughs> oh, I really want to invest in you. And you will learn that not all investments are good investments. Um, you will learn that even, even within family, they will want to see you do well, but not always better than them. Right. Um, with friends, you will see that they want you to do well, but they also want to put their thing in the mix. Yep. So I would say be conscious of who you give your energy to, be conscious of what you attach yourself to, and be true to yourself and to your vision. Um, if you are grounded in who you are as a person and as an artist, then there's not a lot that's going to shake you or that's going to deviate you from that foundation. You'll be able to pick up on things, even though you may not be knowledgeable when you hear things or when you see things, it'll be, um, it'll, 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 it'll be resounding in your spirit. Like, Oh, this is for me. or This is not for me. You get a spirit of discernment um, as you grow. And as you, as you really listen and operate with people, you operate in your purpose and in your, and in your faith in that purpose. So, just, just people's words and people's actions. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely coming across that. Like people are, like they'll they'll say they're on the grind with mm-hmm. you, but then they're never really there. You're the one doing right. most of the work. <laughs> it's very rare that you you meet someone that because I can I can I can uh, give you a really good example. My business partner, mm-hmm. um, her name is Virginia. I love her. She's awesome because we each have our own individual passions, our own individual arts. We also run a business together and we work together. Right. She has an exhibit coming up. Mm-hmm. When we are talking about her exhibit, I'm all into her exhibit. Right. What do you need from me? How right. can I help? Well, what 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 can I do? Right. The same way whenever I have shows like this week, um, like I said, we host open mic. She knew that I was gonna be here in Virginia. She's like, Well, what do you need? What can I cover? Right. How can I fill in? And it's just knowing that time and that placement right. of when it's about you and when it's about somebody else. Right, right. So it's very rare that you meet people like that that know how to step outside of themselves and yeah. really step into somebody else yeah. and help them and motivate them and and you know help their dreams come to fruition right. before their own. Right. So that is very that is very rare. Like mm-hmm. when you do find those people, you got you sometimes you got yeah. to people. Yeah. You hold them close. I love her. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like so, uh, how old are you now? I'm at the age where you don't ask the one her age. <laughs> Well, what I to but ask, no, no, no. I'm 26. I'm okay. Like, yeah. Okay. You know, well, I wanted to ask, Asian gracefully. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 28, so I'm a couple years older. But yeah. What I wanted to ask is, your 26 year old self, what would you ask? What would you tell your 16 year old self for advice? Ooh, baby. <laughs> my 16 year old self. I would tell my 16 year old self to be unapologetic. Girl, stop saying sorry. Stop apologizing. You're really not. Um, and and it's not and it's not to say that I haven't made mistakes or anything, but a lot of the mistake, a lot of the mistakes I made really were not mistakes. Um, a lot of the apologies I gave were not genuine because I didn't understand what I did wrong. Um, and it wasn't explained to me what I did wrong. And then there were instances where I did nothing wrong at all. It's just all a part of our human experience is all about it's all a part of us growing as people and as individuals and i feel like as you grow and as you learn lessons and as you go through life you're able to look back and say that's what that was that's what i needed to learn so i i would say you know don't don't apologize just do better yeah um if you offend of course i apologize for offending you or if you harm someone of course i apologize for harming you but I like to believe that 
we don't intend to hurt people. Yeah. We don't intend to offend people. So take life with grace. Uh, show people grace, and and or more so, take life with, uh, with a grain of salt, as my mom likes to say, um, because everything and everybody is not out to attack you. We are all learning and doing this new day the same as yep. everybody else. Yep. So I would say be unapologetic. Okay, gotcha. One more question before we get out of here. Mm -hmm. What is some of the things that you do to help you deal with like a bad day or just to stay positive? Glad you asked. <laughs> so um, I actually recently started listening to different affirmations, um, and it really does make a difference. Like I know people are like affirmations, uh, but listening 